presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, whom you heard for, from in the beginning of our worship service, tells a story about what it was like for her shortly after she was married. She was a pastor in the Lutheran Church, and she married a man who was a priest in the Episcopal Church. And uh, as this time of the year came around, she asked her husband, what are you doing for Reformation Sunday? And her Episcopalian priest husband said, what is Reformation Sunday? <laughs> Chances are you're asking the same question today if you came to church not realizing that's Reformation Sunday. It's always the last Sunday in October, but sometimes the Sundays get away from us. But today we are celebrating the 501st anniversary of the beginning of that movement we call the Lutheran Reformation. It took place when Martin Luther posted his 95 theses, as tradition says, on the door of Castle Church in Wittenberg. Now if you go to Wittenberg today, you'll see that the 95 theses are indeed on the door of Castle Church. But now they're there in bronze. So it's obviously not the work of Martin Luther. But he posted the 95 Theses, or at least published those 95 Theses, because it was a way that he, as a university professor, could spark a debate in the life of the church about things that had long uh, been practiced in the church that were not really according to the teaching of the gospel. And so he wanted to uh, have a debate. And by opening up that debate, he hoped to bring about uh, the possibility of some reform in the practices of the people of God in his own generation. Unfortunately for us, 500 years later, he happened to pick the day that we call the Eve of All Saints for posting those 95 Theses. So we very rarely see in any Lutheran church a celebration of the Reformation on Reformation Day, also known as Halloween. But we gather on this Sunday and we remember the Reformation and celebrate it, not so much as a, uh, a source of division and, of course, uh, some great hostility in the history of the church, but as a source of renewal and enlightenment for all of God's people, wherever they are. Martin Luther was not trick-or-treating when he posted the 95 Theses. He was calling the church back to the gospel of Jesus Christ, he was calling the church back to that new covenant that the prophet Jeremiah spoke of several hundred years before the birth of Jesus. A covenant that was uh, brought to completion, or at least the fulfillment, in Jesus himself. Who, as you recall from every time we celebrate the Eucharist, said, uh, This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. That new covenant was the uh, the, the living force in the life of the Christian community in Jesus' experience. But that new covenant was something that had been lost over the 1,500 years between the time of Jesus and the time of Martin Luther. The church changed tremendously over those 1,500 years, as you can imagine. No longer was a church just uh, uh, one man with 12 disciples plus a group of women that were following along. Uh, traveling through Galilee and then down the uh, Jordan River and finally up to Jerusalem. No, now by the time of Martin Luther, the church was very wealthy, powerful. Uh, those great cathedrals that you see when you go to visit in Europe or see in the movies, uh, those great cathedrals were already built. Tremendous cost, tremendous effort. Uh, so much different from the church as Jesus started it and experienced it. There's no comparison. The church was now wealthy and very worldly and was not the spiritual force in people's lives that it was intended to be. And because of all that wealth and power that the church had in those days, it is amazing that Martin Luther, a university professor in Germany, was able to do anything at all that would have any effect on that huge institution. Nevertheless, that's what the Reformation turned out to be. And Martin Luther 
uh, simply wanting to return to church in a new covenant, not to start a new religion or anything of that sort, but simply trying to bring people back to the center of that new covenant, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on the cross for all people, including you and me. He wanted people to experience the assurance of salvation that we have through the Word of God. He wanted people to know that in Christ all of our sins are forgiven and we are truly his disciples if we continue in that Word. That good news that uh, was proclaimed by Martin Luther along with many others since then uh, had been written on the hearts of people as the prophet Jeremiah spoke. It has become part of who we are as the people of God. It is there within us, deep within our bodies and within our souls. A word of hope and encouragement and love and salvation. Not something that was purchased by coins or man-made. That gospel that Luther proclaimed focused on Jesus Christ and what God was doing in the world through him and the freedom that God gives to us through the gospel. And what a contrast that was with the way things were in the church in the 16th century. Because in those days, people lived under the fear of punishment. They continually saw God as one who sat upon the throne, who judged all people and condemned all people and uh, meted out punishment to people and needed to be uh, somehow placated by those who uh, followed uh, the rules and the regulations and the requirements of the church. Instead, Luther proclaimed Jesus, the one who brings transformation into the lives of people, the one who gives a new spirit, a new heart, a new soul to God's people, one who liberates us with hope, faith, and freedom as God's beloved children. That gospel is at the very heart of who we are and what we do as the people of God. It is a summons to take up the cross and to share in the mission of God and in the ministry that God reveals to us as we seek to be faithful followers of Jesus day after day. It is not a task that is given only to pastors. It is not a task that is given only to those who get up and preach the gospel. It is a task that is uh, committed to all the members of the body of Christ, to all the baptized, to you and to me who bear in our hearts the sign of the cross and who then can testify with our lips that Jesus is Lord and as we believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. So Reformation Sunday marks the beginning of a movement in the history of the human race. A movement which has changed and transformed uh, nations throughout the world and continues to transform lives of people like you and me. It's not just a day to remember. It is a day for us to be renewed and for us to recapture that vision of Jeremiah, of a people who live and love God from the heart and serve God willingly and faithfully and joyfully in all that they do. That is a mission that God has given to you and to me. So today, God calls upon you to open your hearts, open your minds, open your spirits, Open your hands so that you can be part of that movement that God began in the very beginning when his spirit breathed over, uh, hovered over the waters and he created heaven and earth. God wants to continue that movement of renewal through you and through me. That's why we're here today. Amen. Amen.